Each week, the prefects meet the warden to discuss the issues of the day. It's not anything to do with what we've been talking about, but um, I'd like... I was wondering if you could help me clear up some rumours about the golf course. The Grapevines has it that some ORs donated money for the golf course. And I was wondering whether, A, that was a significant amount, um, you know, whether, if it was in the region of 30,000 or something, or whether it's just five or six, because I'm, I'm positive that a, a very large proportion of the college, and I have suspicion that a large proportion of Comorum, mm -hmm. feel the money could be better spent. Radley's worldwide appeal has been running for two years. In that time, parents and old Radleyans, or ORs, who are scattered over every continent and into every nook and cranny of the globe, have remitted to their old school cash and covenants to the value of over half a million pounds. And the cheque for a thousand dollars... The appeal for money is run by a classics master, Mr Money. The trust itself is administered by the friends of Radley, who so far bought the school an arts centre and new squash courts. But the proposal to use appeal money to turn this arable land into a golf course has aroused passions. I don't know what you feel about this, but if there was any way in which we, as members of the college, can try and persuade the, mem the members of the council that they've made us, they've got their priorities well, wrong. Is it... uh, I have to tell you that I think that when a decision has gone as far as this one's gone, um, it's probably irreversible. I wouldn't know how to even to set about it. We'd... Because I, I mean, I'm but sure everyone's it's... priorities are different. I mean, their arguments were, which game lasts you longest in the course of your life? Golf. Which is the fastest expanding game in the country? Golf. On a more general aspect yeah. of it, um, is there any way of letting the boys know what's actually being talked about in these meetings? Or but the council is obviously the governing body, and a great deal of what they talk about is you know, uh, what you might call privileged material, and it's financial um, and really not anything that a boy need concern himself about. It just worries me that yeah. most Radleyans, yes. but the first thing they found knew about it was when that third list of donors came round, the trustees had decided to build a golf course, and mm. everyone said, golf course, golf course, what the hell do we need a golf course for? I expect they said exactly the same at Eton and Harrow, but... Uh, they're making very, very good use of it. More and more people are taking up golf. When were they built? In the last two years. The head of his house, D Social, and in line to become head prefect, David Van Os decides to defy the warden. He commits his views to paper in a critical essay entitled Window Dressing, which he distributes to Radley's action group. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. We've got to talk about the printing anyway. discussion now. No society at Radley can meet without a master or don being present. The Radley Action Group meets under the eye of one of the school's music staff, Donald view, Payne. Um, the warden took the view that you couldn't really ask a whole load of ORs to take their money back, um, which they've been told is going to be spent on this golf course. So there's two things. Do we flog this one, or is it a dead horse? Do we carry on trying to get the rest of the college in such a frenzy that the golf course is stopped through weight of public opinion? Or do we just try and stop it happening again? Well, um, as far as this goes, we can leave the golf course in as an example, because yeah, even sure. if it's a dead horse, it's a fairly good example. Sure. And if we can't do anything about it... Well, Donald Payne is particularly sensitive about spending large sums. Bad. He campaigned for the new organ in chapel, built at a cost of £130,000. I, I think it's a waste of time to try yeah. and do anything about it as a decision. How, how much of the m money um, was actually given for the golf course? He wouldn't tell me. No, he, he dodged that one very, very nearly. I asked, I mean, I asked yes. him... I asked let's him. not pursue it. It's, it's, well, it's going, yeah. It is a dead horse, I think, and it's going to be an awful this. waste of time. I suggest we just leave it in mm -hmm. yeah. this pamphlet as an example of the sort of thing we're talking about. We can change the necessary tenses or whatever simply to, make, to say that a typical example of this was the golf course and would the many have been better, have been better spent, something like that. But obviously leave it as a decision which has been made. Yeah. But as an example, is everybody happy about this leaflet going out in this form with those amendments? OK, yeah. right. What, what exactly is window dressing? I mean, as a, as a concept? Well, it's 
I think, felt by quite a number of people in the college, boys and dons, that uh, quite a lot of things, particularly which we've been spending money on recently, are for the surface appearance of the college rather than for its basic vital functions. It could be uh, spending money on uh, minor details around the college, um, particularly perhaps to sell it to future customers, than uh, primarily in the interest of the boys. The action group would like to circulate Vanoss's article to the boys, but before this can happen, the warden has to agree. Their idea is that, uh, with your permission, they would like to distribute um, copies of that, mm -hmm. just as an introduction of what it's all about. May I just read it? If you'd like to, yes. Let's see, you've got that one, David. Let's see. It's very reasonable. And then um, to follow that 24 hours later with uh, the distribution, printing and distribution of this all over college, which yes. is the first of the, uh, what seem to be called opinion sheets. So you chose the golf club, the golf course, rather than the organ. Dreaded golf course, yes. Well, we do believe that the organ has a slightly different function in the school compared to the golf course. It's twice as expensive. Ah, oh, yes. What would you be hoping for? Some intelligent discussion. Good. That's fine. Um, I think there's some points in here that would repay some discussion. I'm full of eager expectation. <laughs> yeah, good. It's fine. Thank week. you very much. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Well yeah. done. Thank you. Okay. So the ball's in your court now. Personally, no, I don't think we do go in for window dressing. I think we do try and do what we do do, as well as we possibly can, but I wouldn't call that window dressing. Um, I think we have specifically tried to avoid window dressing. I think you can't look yourself in the eye if you are given to uh, a polished exterior which is rotten inside. Um, I think I know what you're referring to. Uh, and I think it's a very healthy thing that boys should criticise the system. Uh, I wouldn't have it otherwise, but I think in that particular instance, um, the criticism may have been misdirected. Another expensive frill that might be considered part of the window dressing syndrome is this sophisticated printing press now being used to bite the hand that feeds it. Reaction to this amazing thing went out yesterday. I thought most people read it quite sensibly. I don't know about you. I know we had to clear up about 80 from Hall. No, we expected that, surely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I personally feel this is me rather than the action group. Everyone who I've spoken to thinks that number one on the list, the golf course, Everyone is against it, completely. And so I'm going to point out to the warden that, and, well, no, to the Friends Radley more correctly, that X hundred boys disagree with their ideas. Now, whether or not that is something the group wants to cooperate with, but I'm going to do it anyway. We don't want the future of the action group to depend no. on a decision about the golf course. That is why... Yes. That is why... I don't think, really, the action group ought to be associated right. with... Any That's what I wanted to know. Golf. Well, I'm going to. That's how I feel. Yeah. 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 So David Vanoss is on his own, but his lone initiative to marshal pupil power against the golf course faces another obstacle. He can make no headway at all without the warden's blessing. Uh, is that a question? 
it's a statement. It was the statement. I try to keep it simple, simply because... You say here, yeah, I think that there are better things to spend 50,000 on than a golf course. I thought you, you were giving them a questionnaire. Well, no, I was, was you saying... You were just making a statement. I was asking whether they agree with that or not. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, it, there's a very definite point to be made. Yes, um, and, and I think uh, yeah. the point is being made. Yeah. Um, but there may be points to make the other way. Oh, I agree, sir. And uh, but, I'm all in favour yeah. of balance rather than imbalance, um, and maybe we yes. can talk about it. I agree, sir. The only, I mean, the only thing is that you know, as well as I do, that, I mean, democracy or, it doesn't really work in a place like this. Well, I and mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't set out to be a democratic yes. institution. And therefore, I mean, it sets I'll, out to be... Um, an, an ordinary yeah. school. Well, anyway, look, I've yes. got to go and teach. Yes, sir. Um, let's talk about that later. Same um, same. I don't find that uh, really... I, I don't know quite what that means. Yeah. Um, OK. Uh, we, we'll talk about that later. Right, thank you very much. OK. Yeah, well, look, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, yeah. what, what I know. We, we don't want to give it to the council, we want to give it to the... Yeah, but it, I'll, what I'll do, I'll go, copy for council, copy for warden, and copy to every trustee who I can get hold of the address of. Who, yeah, Make sure you great. get a reply from everyone, OK? But, I mean, only the, get only the yeses to sign it. Yeah. Don't... Who's doing it? Make sure you ask absolutely everyone. There's a hefty rumour that money was given, all the 50,000 quid was given specifically for the golf course. Now, I couldn't get the warden to give me a figure. The other thing is, um, the yeses have got to come from the sixth formers more than anyone else. But the more shelf people who are going to be here in five years' time, you can get the better as well. Can you put your four? Can you put your shelf? No, we're not. No, do you agree with it? Can you put your four? Well, I, I, th I think he, he has been forewarned now um, that there is a, a fairly strong groundswell of opinion in this place that uh, too many decisions are taken by too few people and uh, quite a lot of decisions that affect dons and boys fairly intimately um, are virtually done with no consultation at all. Um, this is obviously particularly true, I think, on financial grounds, such as the dons' salaries, things like that. There are over 60 dons. Most live and eat on the campus, the cost being reflected in their salaries, which range from three and a half to only six and a half thousand after 20 years. OK, looking reasonably cheerful. On the three, one. Oh, come on. One, but the Dons aren't two, too cheerful. They feel that tied cottages are all very well, but they'll never be able to afford a home of their own. They put these views to two of Radley's governors, who in turn will report their mood to the governing body or council. That for me, uh, what I get in one month is what I've got. I have absolutely no capital and there is no possible chance of me ever being able to buy any major uh, or spend any money on a house or yeah, buy anything no. major yeah, mm. uh, while I'm at Radley on the present terms. Right. What we can do about that, I don't know, and it is a sign of the times, I couldn't agree more. But may I just make one point, that three years ago I left the army and uh, I did say to Mickey, and he'll be the first to support me on this, that I was very pleased to be able to say that coming to Radley I was slightly better off than I was as a captain in the army. Well, my contemporaries now are something like £4,000 a year better off than I am. And I'd just like to say that, not because I don't think the army should have pay rises, because I'm very much a supporter of that, but just to sort of to slightly refute the point that you made that everybody is getting worse off, because certainly all my army colleagues and policemen and a number of people are getting, have got better off. And I think there might be a sense for some of us that you know, we're swimming against the tide and it might be tricky. Um, we love being here. I wouldn't want to teach in any other establishment. Uh, but I would like to be able to save some money and I can't. What I'm saying is that I think the there, there might be a, a tendency to um, 
move towards cash salary as opposed to some of the benefits that derive from working there. But the total amount available uh, ultimately depends on fee income, doesn't it? That's where you get, that's where you get to it, of course, and where you might find the situation, I suppose, at its worst, where the fees were so gigantic that nobody could afford to send their boys here, and we'd all, be, oh, we'd all be out of work. So, I mean, where are you? I mean, in some ways, it might be helpful to Common Room if um, council or part of council could produce some sort of uh, paper showing the way in which they felt comparability with other similar schools was achieved in a salary manner. In other words, showing what they considered various benefits were worth and so on. Be quite wrong because, after all, these things are completely confidential. I don't think that Eaton would want to tell us what. Uh, exactly their masters were paid, and you wouldn't want us to tell you even what you were paid. Well, except that a year or two ago, it was stated firmly by council that we would be paid on a comparability level with Burnham. And that was categorically stated, and it was stated that all rugby group schools were going to do the same thing. Um, now, if this is so, why is it... It was, honestly. Why is it so secret? Michael, I mean, could I just back John's point in the sense that um, I have just moved here from another school, Oh, I'm delighted. Less. Sorry. I'm well, getting less. I would have to say that comparing the two salary scales, I'm delighted to be here, and obviously I wouldn't have moved unless I thought I was going to be. Um, but as time goes on, because of the nature of the scale, I'm going to be worse off. In the past, we've been, it appears, we've been rather proud of the fact that Bradley hasn't been one of the most expensive schools. One wonders why it hasn't. Have we, in yeah. fact, are we suffering as a result? But actually, when making these comparisons with other schools of fees, that it, uh, that it ought to be done on a daily basis. Because it seemed to me that Radley had so many holidays um, that, uh, and, you know, long leaves and this, that probably on a daily basis we were probably extremely expensive. I doubt it. Sorry, Michael, I think we've drifted slightly away from the point I was making. Um, and Really, what I'm getting at is that I think there is a feeling in Common Room at the moment that perhaps we are being paid, in absolute terms, less than a certain number of other schools. It is a fact that this is most carefully looked at, and the information that is obtained is confidential. And I, I feel that you, have, you must accept that. It, 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 provided we can, as a council, as a governing body, make sure that the comparability with other schools of a similar type is, is at least not worse at Radley than anywhere else. Um, that's the best we can do. And if people can't manage, <laughs> they'll have to go and find another job. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's what it comes down to in the end. Michael, I you understand you right. You said that um, if we found we couldn't afford to work here, we should go and... Uh find another job somewhere well, else. That is yeah, ultimate, fine. Ultimate. Can I just take that argument to its logical conclusion? What is Radley going to do about finding the right sort of staff in the future? If people like myself and others find we've got to go and do another job, doesn't Radley feel there's a need to attract the best staff to teach here? And doesn't that come down to salaries? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. Michael, I'm trying to think of it from Radley's point of view, that's all. I, I just think it's strange that you put that argument forward. I would have thought, from um, Radley's point of view, you would want to attract good staff to Radley. Of course we do, and we have, and do. I'm just suggesting that it might become more difficult. Well, there has been know. a little bit of evidence that it isn't that easy to get exactly the person you want. There was a feeling that money was being channelled in the wrong directions. The Dons were upset at getting too little. David Van Os was upset that a golf course was getting too much. Good morning, again. <laughs> Good morning. I just thought you'd like to see the total number of names. We got uh, 457. 457. You see, because it was organised with some haste, we didn't really have time to, time to canvas more thoroughly. And uh, seeing as the decision was made a year ago, anyway, um, I don't think it was the real point of the petition. Fine. Um, the other thing is that I'd very much like um, your permission to get some photocopies made 
so I can put one up and cover passage. Cover copies of? Of that. I, what I would prefer to see, just seeing a list of names, yes. wouldn't really be very helpful. But if we could then do the next step, which is to say what they do want, what the 457 uh, do think, yes. then that would be helpful. And that would be worth putting a photo copy up yes. in cover passage. OK, well, um, you'd like that Yes, back. please. And then, I mean, but when you've got your A-levels over, yes. it would be a very good exercise to do. Make a format out. Mm -hmm. um, say at the top, you felt that there was something you would prefer to see. Could you list the things in your order that you would like to see? Sir. And that would be really Sir, fascinating. Yes. I'd like to see that. Thank you, much. Thank you David. Item one, apologies for absence, sir. So there are apologies for Mr. Erst, the Dean of Winchester, Mr. Parsons, Bill Marshall Baker, Lord Scarman, uh, Mr. Patrick Nair, Mr. Russell, Mr. Smelly. Uh, the issue of the Don's salaries and further progress on the golf course will be the ultimate responsibility of Radley's governors. Friends of Radley College who have a letter attached which uh, Sir Patrick Nairn wrote to me about the golf course proposal, which uh, the trustees are proposing to take on board. Uh, Pat's proposal is uh, a sh small feasibility study. Um, take um, advice on the cost of running a golf course, because I think that, you know, if we were given the Queen Mary, it wouldn't be much of a gift. And, and I think we ought to, so to speak, take that into view. I mean, we, we may get an, a jolly good outside income, but um, at the same time, I think we, you know, we ought to know what the cost of running a club is. I imagine that if we had a golf course, <coughs> it could become self-financing. That would, ought to be our objective if we have it. I would like to raise, if I may, Chairman, one other point here, uh, which certainly would be of interest to Council. In the past uh, week or so, uh, there's been quite a strong movement on the part of the boys um, who say that they would think that money should be spent on other things before the golf course. Um, I realise that they are not the policy makers of college, but I feel in duty bound to report that to you. A reaction. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no analysis of this has been done, and I pointed out that um, it is not, perhaps, uh, their job to tell council what to do, and that it may even not be a, a, a council matter, but a matter for a separate group, the Friends of Radley Trust. Yeah, but as you say, it's, it's really a matter for the Friends of Radley exactly. Trust who are going to finance it. What we're being asked at the moment is if they mount a fairly modest in money terms, feasibility study, will we share the cost? So that's as I understand it. <coughs> and I would have thought we should say yes to that. It would be mad to suggest that uh, a school can be a democracy. I mean, essentially, as I see it, and, and many would disagree with me, but this is what I believe, a school must be paternalistic. These are young boys. Um, rightly or wrongly, we are standing in in a, a paternal role, and we're prepared to, to, to play that role, and that's, in one way, uh, what their parents are paying for. The Don's salaries were first discussed by the General Purposes Committee at the Great Western Hotel Paddington. The committee's chairman then makes his recommendations to council. And we're recommending to you, sir, that we should increase our Put our salaries right across the board by 10 percent. I don't know whether that, that's something that the council would want to look at in detail. But I think uh, before they take that decision, uh, I think uh, we would really want to hear from Michael Martin about the meeting he had with Common Room. Right? Um, we did have rather a uh, perhaps an uncomfortable meeting with the Dons on Wednesday evening. And there was clearly, we're pl clearly going through one of those stages which we've been through before, when there's a great deal of anxiety about 
comparability with other schools, uh, inflation, and the general level of our salaries. So we've got to take a decision whether we accept the GPC's recommendation for an across-the-board increase of 10%, which comes into effect at the beginning of the next term. And I would have suggested that that we should do. Attendance at uh, other meetings recently leads me to believe that other schools are going above this figure, and that a figure of 11 to 15% is, is likely to be more normal. Uh, I have been making inquiries of other schools, and I think uh, I could say that 12% would be much nearer normal. I don't actually know of one doing 10%. I think we've got... 10% uh, would now seem the minimal gesture which you could make. Yes. This meeting was before the budget, yes. when I think that it was reasonable to suppose that inflation was running at about 12.5% or would run at about that level, and one sees figures of up to about 19% sort of talked about now. I think, uh, also, Chairman, in view of the general atmosphere and yes. slight uh, militance which uh, is present at the moment, um, perhaps 10% uh, would be regarded as a slap in the face. I don't know. Yeah, I think people might say that, but it's a sort of ludicrous thing that one reads in the papers. That, I mean, our masters aren't sort of trade union orientated in that sense, I don't think. Would you be happy to have the GPC's recommendation of 10% raised to 12%? Absolutely. If the bursar's examination with the warden's concurrence is that it ought to be 12, I think that the budgetary system will stand up to it, provided we do accept that the parents are paying uh, at the end of the day. Inevitably, uh, decisions have to be made by a few people in the end. Um, if they're to be effective, I talk to as many people as possible. I inform my governing body uh, as well as I can. But equally, um, being human, I err uh, very often. But I can see no way round the governing body making the ultimate decisions. That's what they're do there to do. They're called the governing body. They govern.